right guys, welcome out to another episode of Ronald Lesman Farms. On this one, we're starting grain harvest. So here we have our combine. It is a New Holland CR 99060. We've had this one for a while. It, it looks pretty new, but we used to store it indoors and that's why, but it's actually fairly old. But we did get this new header. Now this header is a little bit different. It's got belts that run the grain to the middle versus a big auger but we are getting ready to start grain getting everything ready we'll be heading out in a few minutes to to go out to the field and get started so let me go show you the the cart now here we have our grain cart so the combine will go through the field and it has a bin on it when that bin gets full we dump it into this grain cart this cart can hold I believe three full dumps of the combine uh, is what the cart can hold. Hold. Then we have a bunch of semis lined up on the edge of the field that this has a big auger on the other side and it opens up and dumps into the semis. There's the edge of the auger there, but it opens up and dumps into the semis and then the semis just take the grain straight to the mill. So we do have these big grain bins that if needed, we can put some of our grain in there. We do not have enough storage for all of our grain, but most of it just gets taken straight to the mill, if not all of it. And then at the mill, they sort it and ship it out to whoever they have contracts for, for grain to. Let's go look inside of this thing. Here's the inside of it. The auger is down there at the bottom. There's a big plate that covers it. So you can open and close the, the plate to turn the auger on and off. But it's a pretty big bin. Holds a lot of grain. Um, we'll be going here shortly. So show you a whole bunch of video on kind of how we do it. So back over to the combine. How this works is these spin around and just help push the grain in straight. It has these knives down here that they move back and forth like this and it cuts the grain and then it falls down onto these belts and comes into the middle where this auger here kind of picks it up and feeds it in to the combine now once it goes in there there's two big they look like barrels there's two big barrels and then inside the barrels are these big grinders. Now here's the front of it. It's like this bearing and that bearing are on the front of the big barrels. And it, those bar the grinders spin inside the barrels and the barrels have grooves in them. So it kind of grinds the grain up and then all the kernels just fall through the grooves. Now, what doesn't fall through the grooves is all the straw and the chaff. That, gets pushed out the back it hits these kind of spreads it out and then the rest of it goes up up there and gets shot out the back into straw and then we'll bale that but in here there's all these sieves that kind of let the kernels go through but not the straw and right there you can kind of see the bottom of the barrels up there and that's what spins and grinds all the grain up get the kernels out from there it drops down here and there's an auger right here this auger takes it all the way up the side into that big bin up there now I'm gonna show you the bin now here we have Christopher in the bin this is the bin that's on the, the top of it holds quite a bit um, Christopher's in here because there's this big hatch here and we have to put duct tape along the seams because the grain will leak out anywhere that it can. So anywhere there's a little crack or anything, we have to duct tape it or put silicone on it so it doesn't leak the grain out. But this is the auger, comes up from the side, dumps the grain in. There's a window so you can kind of see from the cab how full you're getting. Once this gets full, then it dumps into the grain cart. And then the grain cart dumps into a semi. All right, we 
are out here in the field now. The combine just got full. So now he's going to dump into the grain cart. Normally they fill while they're moving, but the grain cart is pretty full. And the combine may not all fit in the cart. We need another semi. So you can see up there, that mound is all grain. Now he's dumping that into the cart. We'll see if he can get it all in there. Now you can also kind of see how this works. That rotates, the belt feed everything in, the auger turns, and that's what uh, sucks the grain into the combine. Filling it up. Starting to heat up. I think you'll be able to get it all in there, but it won't hold much more. On the back, you can see this this chute right here between the lights is where the, the straw comes out. It comes out. It makes these wind rows of straw. And then we come by with the bale. We've already baled part of it. And we bale up that straw in the bale. Now he's going to get going. Let's go drive alongside him and see, show you how it works. You see the straw shooting out the back. You can see the, there's sieves right there bouncing around. That's what's filtering the straw and the grain kernels. And then the straw comes out the back and makes a nice little windrow. Now those fingers, they come around and grab the grain and they keep it straight. They keep it from falling over when it hit, gets hit with the blades. Because the blades are moving and when it hits, it would knock the grain over. So those fingers keep it standing up. They also help kind of feed it into the auger. You can kind of see the bunch right there to the shed in. cart you can see the cart behind me right there um, we're out here in the field we've started harvest so we are out here going uh, the combine is just about full so I'm gonna show you guys how he dumps into me and then I will go dump and do a semi okay so those flashing lights on the combine mean that he's three-fourths full now he puts his boom out and you can see right there at the top there's a little pile of grain starting to pile up now he can pile it up pretty high before I actually have to go under, but when he puts his boom out, I try to get under there. Now I'm just gonna drive underneath the boom here. I gotta be careful not to hit the header down there with my track. Now he's gonna start dumping into me. I'm gonna try and steer this and control the throttle while also filming. So this could be a little interesting. But yeah, so he's dumping into me now, and that'll drain his bin. You can also get a pretty good view of the header right here. If I can not hit him. But he's just cruising through. He can go about two, two and a half miles an hour. Now, that's not very fast. We did get a new header for this combine a couple years ago. With our old one, we could go faster, but it had more problems. So, got this new header. Next year, I think we're planning on growing a lot more grain. So, we're probably gonna be looking to get a new combine next year. So, if you guys have a combine you guys like, let me know, we'll look at it. But he's gonna load me up. When he's done, I will go dump into a semi. It's a little hard to drive this thing while also uh, watching everything and filming. 
All right, looks like I am about full and he's getting about empty. There, he shut it off and he'll, he'll fold his boom in and now I can pull away and go fill the semi. Okay, I'm headed over to the semis. They are parked way over there. I gotta drive over to them. Now I have to drive over there, unload and get back before the combine gets full because the goal is to not have the combine stop. If the combine stops, we lose time and it already takes us about two weeks to get harvest done anyway, so we don't want to lose any time. Okay, I'm over here by the semis now. So I gotta fold my boom out, so I'm gonna click this button. And there's a boom that should appear. There it is. That is my auger. That's how I dump it into the semi. Okay, I'm next to the semi now, so now I have to turn on my PTO and open the gate that lets the grain come in. That little rod right there on the side of the boom is the gate. So now we just dump the grain in. I probably have enough to fill this whole semi, so we will see. PTO's spinning. I just gotta pull forward so I don't overflow the grain out of the sides of the semi. We'll get this thing filled up. It's gonna be close whether we can actually fill them or not. Starting to run out. Don't know if we got them all the way full. He might decide to go anyway. We'll get every last little bit out of this cart and then go back to the combine. All right, now I can shut this off. Shut the gate down and the PTO off. And I can pull away. I can put my boom down. It'll fill up again. Here we go. Well, you can't have a harvest without having breakdowns. We usually have a lot of breakdowns. Looks like something's broke, probably a knife. Um, if we get enough breakdowns, I will make a breakdown video as well. But see, we're gonna start with this broken knife. Broken knife right there, this is what it should look like. Right there. And then there's another one right here. Don't ask me why all of a sudden two at the same time, but. Sometimes they break when you hit stuff or rocks or pipe. These ones don't break as much as our old header. Our old header, man, we would wear out knives really fast, but these knives actually last quite a while. They're really, really sharp on the edge. Those are like needle sharp. But the grain comes in here like this, and then they move back and forth and it just slices it. So, change some knives. Now to change these, there's two little bolts on each one, and the bolts are pressed in, so you just have to take the nut off of one side. Take out the two nuts, and then the plate, the, the knife slips off. You can put a new one on. You kind of have to line it up with the grooves in here in order to get it to go in. So they're not too hard to replace unless they're by these. These are called P-lifters. That's what we put on if we have downed grain. It helps lift it up enough that the knives can cut it so we don't plug up. Without those, it's really hard. It's really hard to pick up grain that has laid down because of wind or rain or whatever caused it to lay down. Maybe we, can, we can move it over to the side maybe and get it in. Yeah, we can try that. Versus taking that off, I don't know. Okay, we got it on the nuts. We are able to move it over. But now we have to slide it back this way to get it underneath that plate right there. And then we can just put the nuts back on. 
Okay, we got it over far enough to drop down. Now I just gotta tighten it up. And this one will be good to go, but that's how you change a knife. We're gonna, might have to take this plate off right here to get this one, because it's gonna be underneath that no matter where we go. So that'll be a little bit more difficult, but that's how you change these little knives, they're not too hard. All right, I'm in the combine now with Christopher and we're getting going again after changing some some broken knives so you can kind of see how everything works you see the grain coming down onto those belts and getting fed into the middle where there's that auger over here this has a little auto steer unit that just rubs on the steering wheel kind of keeps it straight so you can watch everything else this is the gps stuff that's the gps up here tells you tells you moisture tells you speeds of everything stubble height this is the of the sieves that kind of sift the grain down tells you how much space is in there the fan speed that blows the chaff out of the back this is the rotor speed so when when the grain goes in you see it looks like a kind of a blade it spins there's a rotor in there that spins and kind of rubs uh, the wheat and that's what kind of thrashes the wheat is the rotor and the concave those work together and then back here we have this window and you can see if you look close that's all grain so you can kind of see into the bin to see when you're going to be full. We are just about full. And then the grain car will come by and it'll fill up. So the reason we have to go two miles an hour because we've sped up to see the speed right there is a 2.5. Well, this little funnel tells you that you're getting too much grain and, and straw in those rotors. And you're start, it's, it's probably starting to spit grain kernels out the back instead of actually putting it in the bin because there's just too much stuff in there so we have to slow down so that doesn't go up too high and you start losing kernels okay we got the arm out we are just about full josh will come up here in a minute in the grain cart so we can start filling Beeping at us that it's full. Now we can dump into the cart. As long as you can see through my dirty windows, I didn't clean them this morning. <laughs> yeah, the windows get really dirty with all the grain dust. Then you can come back and you can look at this window and watch and see it start to go down. Start to see some light. Means the bin's getting low. Now you can see this is empty and starting to fill 
back up. Well, this is where those P-lifters come in handy. You can see this grain is down, but the P-lifters help lift it up so that the knives can cut it. So we don't really have to slow down. Before we had those, it would bog it down and sometimes you just would miss it. It wouldn't lift it up high enough. Okay, we got to the end. Turn around. Start cutting the other way. We've got a lot of acres to cover. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for 2023 grain harvest. Hope you learned something. We'll be bringing new videos all the time. Again, if we do get enough breakdowns, I probably will have a breakdown video of all the things that broke during grain harvest. Uh, it tends to happen. But yeah, I hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.